In this video, I'm going to explain how to find the gradient between two coordinates. Here, I have a graph with two coordinates identified that are part of a linear line. When we are trying to find the gradient of a line, we are trying to find what is known as the rate of change. Essentially, this is how much the y value changes for every one step of x. In maths, we tend to use the letter m to represent the gradient, and I have referred to this value as the multiplication factor in previous videos. Essentially, gradients are the same thing. If we look on a graph that I've got here, we can break down the journey between the two coordinates as an x step, or how far we've travelled in the x direction, and as a y step, which is how far we've travelled along the y direction. Now, the gradient is a measurement of the y step divided by the x step. To find this, we could use the graph and count the number of steps in the y direction, which is positive 2, because it's going up. Then, we could count the number of steps along the x, which is positive 3, because it's going to the right. That means we can describe the gradient of this line, or between these two coordinates, as a fraction 2 over 3. Let's take a look at another example. Here we've got the coordinates negative 2, 6 and 4, negative 2. We can do the same thing here and break this journey between the two coordinates in the x and y direction. And if we count the number of steps in the y direction, we find that we've taken 8 steps. But this time, it is down, so we consider this to be a journey of negative 8. The journey in the x direction is 6 steps to the right, so we consider that journey to be positive 6. So the gradient here can actually be described as the fraction negative 8 over 6, which simplifies down to negative 4 over 3. But the process we're doing is rather tedious, is time consuming and is limited to needing to draw a graph. So, is there a faster way? Well, let's consider these coordinates again of negative 2 and 6 and 4, negative 2, and give them labels to help us refer to them as we go. So, to help us, I'll call this first coordinate x1, y1, and this second coordinate x2, y2. Whenever we break the journey up into the x step and y step, like we've had here, we have essentially broken up the coordinates as well into the x's and the y's. In order to find this y step, we actually need to find the difference between the two y coordinates. And I like to write this as y2 subtract y1. So if I did that here, y2 is negative 2, and we subtract y1, which is 6. So we have negative 2 subtract 6, which is equal to negative 8. Therefore, our y step is equal to negative 8, which is what we found before. We can do the same thing here with the x step. The difference is it's going to be x2 subtract x1, which is 4 subtract negative 2. Therefore, our x step is equal to positive 6, which, once again, is what we found before. So, Essentially, what we've actually found ourselves is a shorter way to find the gradient, where the gradient, or m, is equal to y2 subtract y1, all divided by x2 subtract x1. But let's check out another coordinate pair and see how this works. Here we've got the coordinates negative 2, negative 6, and 3, 14. Let's start by labelling our coordinates as x1, y1, and x2, y2. Then write ourselves our shortcut rule that we've just found, which is the gradient, or m, is equal to y2 subtract y1, all divided by x2 subtract x1. We now replace our y2 value with 14, as we labelled, and subtract our y1 value, which is negative 6. We also replace our x2 with 3 and subtract our x1 value of negative 2. 14 subtract negative 6 is equal to 20, and 3 subtract negative 2 is equal to 5. So our gradient is equal to the fraction 20 over 5. 
but this is the same as saying 20 divided by 5. So therefore, our gradient is actually equal to 4. But we can actually check this by looking at a graph as we did before. So here is the graph with these two coordinates. And if we count the y step as shown, it is equal to 20. And the x step is equal to 5. So the gradient is equal to 20 over 5, which is what we found before. So this rule here allows us to find the gradient without the need of drawing the graph. But now, I'd like for you to have a go at finding the gradient between some pairs of coordinates for yourself. The last coordinate pair I've included here is a bit of a challenge, but if you follow our shorter method, you should be able to find the answer. Remember that the gradient is the rate of change, which is how much the y value changes for every one step of x. We find this by dividing the y step by the x step, which we can describe as being y2 subtract y1 all divided by x2 subtract x1. 